and we start making the crossing. Off to the mainland. It's 35 knot wind at the moment. Woo -hoo -hoo, it's pretty grim. The Bass Strait. It spans the gap from Tasmania to mainland Australia. The sudden change in seafloor depth, combined with its wild weather, makes this stretch of water home to some of the roughest ocean conditions in Australia. If you time it right, however, it's a beautiful stretch of ocean to cross in any craft of your choosing, whether it be by ferry, plane, yacht, jet ski, stand-up paddleboard, or in our case, sea kayaks. Three days until we leave for the Bass Strait. Um, I'm currently cutting chicken and I found out five minutes ago that I booked the ferry two days early. I think once you do enough sea kayaking in Australia, at some point, doing Bass Strait just ends up on your bucket list. Two things were required for a successful trip Time off and a team. What was you project it? Alright. <laughs> oh, if you don't know by now, I'm Ben Jackie. Uh and you know, I'm a guy who just likes to push it a little bit and I'm stoked to be doing that. That'll do. Individually, we're all pretty well versed in the outdoors, sea kayaking and suffering in general but we knew that Bass Strait was not something that any of us would want to do alone. So we teamed up and planned a reunion of old friends. We took the ferry down to Tasmania with three kayaks and 21 days worth of food packed into the car and met Ben in the northeast corner of Tassie where we would begin our journey. So we're out here at Little Muscle Rove Bay uh, it's the day before we hope to leave um, for Clark Island and so forth over there. And we're just doing our first little test run of the kayaks. We did some splashing around, made sure our boats were well balanced, checked the weather again, did some final prep and tried to get a good night's rest. Currently navigating to Clark Island. <laughs> It'd be more satisfying if my hair wasn't full of beetles. <laughs> But you know, you can't have everything. That's all. And just like that, we were off. It felt a bit surreal, actually. Hold on, wait. What are we actually doing again? Oh, shit. It's a big old ocean out there. So, we're somewhere in the bank straight. About 7k from the Muscle Road Bank. Uh, a bit of a easily wind. No. Oh, look at the speed! Uh, we're going to land on that feature today. How do you feel about that crossing alley? <laughs> the weather this morning was not quite what we thought it was going to be. No. Uh, a bit windier than anticipated. We're at Clark Island. Um, we thought we were in Spa Spike Bay, um, but it turns out we're just in the bay before that where there's meant to be a historic wreck. Um, the weather wasn't great, so we stopped here for lunch. How's the view, Ben? Mate, it's pretty cracking, eh? So we're currently just skirting between Preservation Island here and Rum Island just there. It's pretty shallow, as we can see. So yeah, it's nice to get in the shelter for a little bit before we've got to cross, cross the nor'easter uh, to get to the coast of Cape Barren Island. Fair to say, we had a tough first day. An early reminder that timing the tides really does make a difference. <laughs> we had come to paddle the Bass Lake and not 100% sure that what just happened was anywhere close to that. That night, we had renewed conversations about acceptable weather conditions. <laughs> Who said chivalry was dead, eh? Ugh. And who's it sacrificing yourself for the film was dead? Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> oh, God. It's about quarter to six.
So, we've just arrived here at the town of Cape Barron and the weather conditions don't look good for the next couple of days. Uh, so we bought some pies and we're gonna set up a small uh, makeshift camp. And uh, yeah, this will be us for the next couple of days, hanging out here. So, not ideal, but what are you gonna do? Could be worse. Um, so the storm is coming in and someone from the Cape Barren community has offered that we can sleep at the school. They have like this little bungalow, we'll be a bit more sheltered so we're going to pack up camp here and tie up the boats and get ready for the storm. Probably the best way they could be spending this one. Weather still not a goer. As you can see, the visibility out there is pretty poor, and the wind actually out on the sea is too high. It's such a satisfying noise. Good stuff. So we're here on Cape Barren Island for another another day. Few days. Another few days <laughs> now. We got up uh, pretty early this morning to have a look at the weather, and uh, the wind was still going too too strong for us to get through. So it's a little bit frustrating now because if you look outside, it's been dead flat for about four hours. Um, we needed a three-hour window, <laughs> but the predictions weren't for a window at all. So uh, you yeah. know we can only play with with what what information we can get. So it's it's our third day on Cape Barren Island now. Um, so you can probably see in the background the wind's just still a bit strong for us to get across. It's meant to get real strong today, so we're chilling out here. But we're chilling out in this paradise, really. Uh, <laughs> Troy, one of the local blokes we've met, uh, has just brought us down here, and he's just going to take us and show us around a bit of the island today. He's just, I think, going to fish for a little bit, and we're going to have a wander and just enjoy this stunning scenery on an island where only 70 people live. So how far out should we be trying to throw this thing? So... Where's this last time? Oh, you I wouldn't have got that stick for you. What's that? Ready? <laughs> so we're four days into our little paddling adventure and we just mentioned to Troy that we'll be leaving tomorrow. So he came up uh, to our little bungalow hut here with um, a little bit of shark but we, and some eggs as well. But we also told him that we were going to do a bit of a fry up. So uh, <laughs> it's a high calorie diet that we're doing at the moment. So we hope that our bellies can save it for tomorrow morning when we get to do a bit of paddling. So um, yeah, thanks Troy. <laughs> Ben, what are we doing today? We are crossing the Franklin Sound from Cape Barren Island to Flinders Island. It's very exciting because we've been stuck here a few days and we're all desperately keen to get out in the water and get some paddling done. Yeah, so we're gonna go and do that. It's exciting. As great as it was to meet Troy and explore a little slice of Cape Barren Island, we were itching to get further up the coast of Flinders Island. The winds were so constant that who knows when the next weather window would open. Up 
Upon arriving at Trousers Point, we had a few curious onlookers. One was a friend that had come to meet us on Flinders, and the other two were some very friendly sea kayakers. Hi. Hey. Yeah, it was nice to finally get off Cape Barron after, you know, it's not all that long, but, uh, you know, I think we got a bit bored of waiting for the wind to change. We, we, we definitely, you know, became friends with the locals, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Have you paddled it before? No. No. Well, I haven't. Liz has. I haven't. Nice. But believe it or not, this is very much like around the Albany region of South Western Australia where we live. Oh, is it? Mm. Okay, wow. Well. Yeah. yeah, see, for us, the rock type's entirely different to what we're used to. It's just... mm. You're up Sydney way? Right? Yeah, Sydney yeah. way, so it's a lot of sand that yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice change. And it's Slate where I live in South Wales. <laughs> 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 So much water in there. Hi, Les Allen's my name. I'm a Paddle Australia senior instructor. I've been sea kayaking for about 30 years and my partner and I are out here on a month long trip in the uh, islands and we come across these wonderful young people. Now I think these are the type of young people that really we, we like to suck excitement out of, you know, stand next to and, and get some of their youthful enthusiasm and it just brings back great memories of some of the young people I've met over my life and indeed going back to when we were young people ourselves. So um, I think what they're doing is a, is a wonderful quest and um, maybe we don't have enough quests in this world. Like here somewhere. Where if we got up to White Mark tomorrow, we could get up to like, almost up to Royden on Monday. Yeah. Because we're limited time-wise, I have to go back to uni, and if we spend forever getting up Flinders, then I'm just going to end up having to bail and go home. Yeah, actually, Hogan to the mainland is shorter than I thought. Hmm. It's only 50k. Yeah. yeah, that's not too bad. Which is what we did on day one to get How there. are the currents through there? Um, the currents around the islands pick up when you get to the shallow water, mm. yeah. so you yeah. always want to make sure that you're not paddling back against the current. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, the last two hours is not a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just because when you're outside, you're having fun, you're relaxed, you're happy, yeah. all those types of things. Stress is the biggest killer, I reckon, of the human human body and mind. Mm. Yeah. Leads to so many other issues. That's it. And you don't enjoy yourself when you're stressed. Yeah. And really, apart from enjoying yourself, what else is there in life? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Very true. Because the Bass Strait is one of those places that's very dynamic. You've got currents, you've got a lot of different types of weather. The weather will change incredibly quickly. So you need that experience of understanding the environment. If you've got the time, there are days when it's dead flat and anyone can actually paddle it. But they're very, very rare. So with your group, what your problem is, is finding that right weather window and finding it within your capability. Where, where, where are we? Um, we're at White Mark at the moment. I'm um, gonna go into town, get some food, celebrate Australia Day, just enjoy ourselves while the weather turns. So I think their, their chances of getting across are quite good. I think they'll have an adventure. I think they'll experience some rough conditions in the conditions that they're going across. And I think they'll also experience quite a lot of waiting because currently you've probably got the worst possible set of conditions to cross Bass Strait. I haven't seen a January this bad for a very, very long time. So what they're going to have to do is scurry across on an acceptable day. So it's not going to be an easy, easy job. If they get across Bass Strait, they're going to do it hard. They're going to do it tough. And I think they're capable of doing that, which is excellent. We spent three days in White Mark. Maybe you should practice for like an hour first. No, mate, because they just come randomly when they're good. What is this? What is Ali doing? <laughs> right? We got a bit stir crazy, but it was a good opportunity for a resupply, and it also gave us time to reflect on our trip so far. Who's the most annoying person on the trip so far? It's probably me. Uh, for the others, I'm sure. Look, everybody, everybody's done pretty well. There's been no arguments or anything. Um, 
But yeah, I'm sure my constant like, are we gonna go, are we not gonna go, ah, probably gets a little bit annoying, but you know, is what it is. Kind of frustrating to be just stuck in by the weather, but I think it's something that we have to just get to grips with. If it was up to me, I'd pack three times as much coffee and have morning and afternoon ones. Um, but no, we only have coffee every second day. And with Ben, he talks a lot. Um, but it's kind of nice. Sometimes when you're feeling really down, it does lift your spirits just to have someone chatting away beside you, telling you stories of his childhood. But at other times, you just want the silence. <laughs> All right, so the trouble with the Nor'wester is that we're stuck down here on Flinders Island and the wind is blowing in this direction down here. And as we're trying to paddle up, you know, it's a fair long paddle, so we'll get halfway across and then the Nor'wester will kick in and then we'll get blown over to New Zealand somewhere. <laughs> so ideally, ideally what we want is we want the wind to be coming from the south or southeast so that it will give us a nice little tailwind all the way up to the Kent group there. And then after that we can deal with whatever else comes. But that's really what we're hoping for, but it doesn't look like it's coming. By this point on Flinders Island, we had stopped socialising. Instead, we just collectively checked the weather every five minutes. Leaving the comforts of free camping in the middle of town behind, we tried to manifest a weather window by getting back in the boats and heading up the coast. We had a pretty strong headwind this morning, so um, got up to about 21 knots headwind, which obviously is uh, is slow, slow impedes progress big style. So it took us quite a few hours to get to where we are now for lunch. I mean, we're over halfway through the day, but uh, you know, you kind of hope to be, yeah, you don't want to be sitting all day doing that sort of speed. <laughs> Hard work, I would say today's paddle. After a short siesta, we jumped back in the boats and continued on up the coastline. Well, not the easiest day's paddling. It's a pretty solid headwind. Just arrived at Royden Island. Taking us on a little tour. Sure. Let's go up to the hut. You'll see here is our driveway. <laughs> and then we've got our clothesline and our new home. So after slogging through a bit of a crosswind for the last, what, maybe two or three hours, uh, we've arrived at this wonderful hut built by the, uh, the land care, the local land care group. It's nice. The social vibe here today has been very tense, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, we spent our time pretending that we were enjoying fishing and um, <laughs> deliberating the forecast. <laughs> so it's been a nice, peaceful, yet somehow <laughs> stressful day. Many fish caught. Well, no, oh yeah, we caught on my a behalf. We did catch a few fish, yeah. Uh, Ali got I a few fish. fish. Um, yeah, we've got a bit of a wind coming through and then uh, we have one day of reasonable weather tomorrow and then maybe a su maybe a southerly somewhere in here yeah. and so and it's it's weighing up that that risk threshold and as Ali said we probably shouldn't push too much further past the limits we put in when we were sitting nice and comfy yeah, on yeah. our sofas 
it was a hard pill to swallow. Patience is in fact a virtue. To paddle would have meant doing the biggest crossing on a hot day clouded in smoke from the bushfires. We had a shelter and creature comforts to wait out whatever the weather had to offer. In the meantime, we tried to not let ourselves get too bored. So we've kind of just chilled out, really. Yeah, went diving for abalone, didn't find any big enough. Well, it's fishing. Ben yeah. caught a big fish today. Yeah, I caught my dinner. first fish, <laughs> um, and then and then we thought it didn't look very tasty, so we put it back. And we went and uh, chatted to uh, a bloke who put his boat just over here to chill out for a bit, and we went and had some lunch with him, which was really nice. That was calamari and abalone from just off the island we're on, so that was pretty cool. Hello and welcome to Royden Island News with me, Ben Shanky, and me, Aidan Cameron. Our top story tonight, three sea kayakers are still stuck on Royden Island. That's right, Aidan. The three sea kayakers who hail from Australia and the UK respectively have been sitting on Royden for several days now while waiting for a good enough weather window to cross to deal. Now let's cross live to our weather correspondent, Alexandra Petto, for a live update. It's our fifth full day here on Royden Island. Um, it's been a nice stay, but it's time to start packing because we might move on tomorrow. Yeah, the luxury and comfort of beds and blankets and all this sort of thing has been great, but we're meant to be on a paddling trip and tomorrow, hopefully, we're going to have the weather window to go. So today's plan is pack up, make sure the boat's are completely ready, make sure our food's completely ready, and then get an early night and go off tomorrow. Wake up three, maybe two thirty, depending on how fat you are. <laughs> yeah, uh, sounds good. What you think, Allie? You ready for tomorrow? No. <laughs> I can stay here. Can you stay? Yeah. Time for bed already. Yeah, mate. Uh, we're getting up at three to go paddling. So yeah, early night. Hey guys, it's time to get up. It's like three in the morning. We're going to deal. Oh, let's go. Thanks for letting us hang out here for a couple of days. It's 
been great. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, you can hear the penguins. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Probably get on. What is it? Start live track? Yeah. Uh, 3.59 in the morning. Pretty much bang on track. And we're heading off to Deal. See you then. Yeah, I mean. yeah good. We got that off. Into the darkness. All right. See you on the mainland, Ben. <laughs> You got him? Yeah. With only three metres visibility in the dark and with no landmarks in sight, it was difficult to navigate leaving Royden Island. We hugged the coast to the left, narrowly avoiding running aground and continued away from Royden and Flinders into the darkness. It's 10 past five in the morning. Uh, Ali's already a bit seasick. We've got the sunrise coming up this morning. Um, I'm drifting away from the group and we've been battling a little bit of an incoming tide, which has increased the swell a fair bit. Um, so I think it's a bit rougher than we expected, but that's okay. So we continue on. All right, so it's uh, 22 past six, and uh, yeah, we're making our way across. It's nice in the sun. It's 63 kilometres between Royden Island and Deal. 13 hours of paddling, or suffering, depending on who you ask. Filled by the dulcet tones of Harry Potter, read by Stephen Fry. Chapter One. The Boy Who Lived. Mr and Mrs Dursley of Number Four Privet Drive were proud to say that they were perfectly normal, thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious. So cool, seeing an albatross. He's just come to check us out. We're just off the coast of Craggy Rock over there. So we're about kind of half, wait, sorry, not one third of the way, thereabouts. Just under 20 k's left. Uh, which means for us it's about another four hours or so. So we should be at, um, at Winter Cove at about 4.30. Wait, cakes, is that not salt? Yeah, big day, big day. Uh, major feelings right now are relief <laughs> that we're here on deal. Wasn't sure for a good week whether we were going to get the chance to make it out here. And the other major feeling right now is dizziness because my body and brain are still just going up and down like they were in the boat all day. I think we're all the same, just sitting here with the ground doing this. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, excited to be on deal. And, um, you know, stoked that everybody pushed through a pretty hard day. How you doing, Ali? Good. Tired. Today was rough. It was very rough, mentally. Yeah. It was very calm out there, but very rough. No, I, I got sick right at the start of the day in the dark and then just stayed sick all day. It's a long 12 hours. You gonna sleep well tonight? I don't know. I'm still... <laughs> Crossing wasn't too bad uh, for me anyway. It was really good conditions. Uh, a bit sketchy in the morning. It was a bit dark, a bit hard to see. Um, we were doing some tricky navigation, but apart from that, not too bad. Had some Harry Potter. Can't ask for more. Yeah.
What was the question again? <laughs> what was your favourite part of the day? It was the albatross. Albatross, yeah, that was pretty good. I've got an important question, Aiden. What? How much pee did you get in your lap today? None. Oh, but, so I said... <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, a little dribble, a little dribble. <laughs> a little dribble. Yeah. It's a pretty beautiful morning here at Deal Island. And the island is looking pretty beautiful as well. Shame we only get to stay here 14 hours or something like that. But uh, the weather at the moment is looking good, so we've got to make the next jump. Oh, last night while walking along the beach, I just got the Garmin out yeah. and zoomed out and zoomed out and zoomed out. Yeah. And it was like, oh, fuck yeah, we got so far. Yeah. We're going to set the compass or go with the compass bearing of 290 degrees and hopefully over there somewhere. About 40k is Hogan Island. We are making really good ground and uh, none of our group is seasick today, which is amazing for the moment. Let's um, cross our fingers for that one. But, uh, yeah, we can see Hogan in the distance, and it's um, all good here. landed on Hogan Island in this beautiful little cove um, and just to make things better there's a hut up there so just gonna go and check it out we'd been so lucky to get two beautiful days in a row but there was a bit of wind coming the next day and our arms were tired time for a rest day Hogan Island is basically a granite rock right on the Tassie Victorian border. In the 60s, it was used for grazing and now resembles a grassy hill in the middle of nowhere. What's for dinner? Chicken laksa. Mound designs, yeah. Okay, on that one. <laughs> there we go, we have to use NRS dry bags because NRS is top quality. <laughs> Leaky dry bag? Non leaky. Actually, dry that bag. is very no. true. <laughs> Look at that. Do you reckon this is enough to do what, 55 kilometers? <laughs> I think that's plenty. Probably. Um, and remember, we got a bit of fruit cake each as well. See which goose I go for. Okay. Food. Good morning. It's day 18 of our Bass Strait crossing now. And we're just leaving here, which is Hogan Island. You can see a little hut in the corner and the others getting on at the beach down there. There's a lot of smoke haze today. The bushfire smoke blown in from Victoria. So. It's our final day in Tassie. We crossed the border into uh, Victoria, uh, just at the top of this island here. And we start making the crossing. Off to the mainland. Yellow. Yeah, they're pretty big. So we're only a few kilometers out from Hogan, and you can't see it behind us. 
um, combination of the smoke from Victoria and uh, the cloud today, but it's pretty thick. It was still 40 kilometres to the mainland, but for the first time this whole trip, we were not battling against the weather. The swell was in our favour, and it was so calm that we felt like we were paddling downhill the whole time. We're less than three kilometres from the continental landmass of Australia. And you can't tell. Not sure how close we're going to have to get before we can see it through the fog. No, but nice to be able to see the anyway. Yeah. We sat offshore for a bit, hesitant to land and end the trip, savouring the moment and giving ourselves a small pat on the back with the crossing done in only five and a half hours. Oh. <sighs> nice work. Yeah, yeah come here. Congrats, come mate. Oh. Cheers, Ali. Top effort. Nice work. Oh, okay. We're here on the mainland. Solid ground. Yeah. Solid ground. <sighs> and what a spot. Man. What a, spot. what a beautiful place to land, eh? Do you want me to grab the back, Ellie? Oh, it's all good. How are we going? Oh, are we doing this? I suppose so. Yeah. Having that on your waist? Yeah, 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 something like that. Uh, is it on? Bit tired, hey, Ben? Yeah. Yeah, no, we did a really good time today, and I, like... But, uh... Yeah, I feel like I've pulled something in my back or something, so the last couple of hours were a bit unpleasant. But, but still, I mean, we did this 50... 2k or whatever we did today quicker than we did 40k <laughs> two days ago <laughs> oh yeah there he is the I'm main feeling, man i'm feeling pretty stoked check out this mustache now man. yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, this is amazing i just saw this um beach on google maps and was like yeah okay should be all right to land on i don't know where we're gonna camp but um yeah one more day of paddling left but we're here we made it to um, to Victoria. Do you want to say the words? We have crossed the bass. We have <laughs> crossed the bass strait. Reaching Home Cove marked the end of the trip for us. We had left Little Muscle Rove Bay 18 days ago and made it all the way across the bass. There was only 24 kilometers left to go around Wilson's Prom and to the car. You want to know what the weather is doing? No. How strong is it? It's only 16 knots at the moment, yeah. but it's predicted to come up a fair bit. Yeah. Um, so we should be okay. <laughs> it's going to be a great day. Emboldened by our sense of accomplishment, we decided to paddle tomorrow, despite our less than ideal forecast. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, guy. Oh, he's a hefty one. How do you get so lucky? It's skills. Skills. Ali, where are we off to today? Tidal River. And why are we going to Tidal River? Because that's the end point. No, but what's there? There's like, there's cars and stuff. There's a and town. There's a town. I don't know, that's where you end the Bass Strait. You don't end on a beach without a road. Well, I mean, I can leave my boat here, but I doubt you guys can. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a swell rolling in. 
It's uh, not going to be an easy battle around the headland. just come around the tip of Wilson's Prom, which is the southernmost point of mainland Australia. We're all just chilling out for a second. Because it's first time. Almost there. Just on 5k or so. It was so windy coming into Tidal River that all we could think about was getting our boats and gear off the beach. A very abrupt ending to a trip like this. Like, would I do the bass again? No. It was good fun, I'm glad we've done it, and you see some absolutely incredible places. But the monotony of sitting for 13 hours paddling on a bearing, not seeing anything, it's like, is this fun? <laughs> I think the problem is, I'm, I'm not gonna say, never say never, because I'm stupid enough to talk myself into something like this again. Even as we sat down to eat the kiosk's finest burgers, it was hard to process. The trip was over. Ben was leaving us. Time to go home. The end. Transition's well over. Yeah. What time? What's the timing of the transition? 4.48pm. 4.48pm. So Kayaking's over. Six hour transition. It's been two years and I still haven't been back in a sea kayak. I think I was a bit scared from all the monotony and waiting for weather windows. But I must say, I'm starting to feel the itch once again. And looking back at the beauty of the beaches, the landscapes, the card games, the kind and inspiring people we met, and the time spent with beloved friends, who knows when we'll pick up the phone again and answer the call for another sea kayaking adventure.